hey, I thought I'd do one of these things, even if it's not perfect or polished, but for a long time I've been wanting to um, just do little videos where I talk about a record of some kind, a record that changed my life. And uh, this record that changed my life was the Residence Satisfaction single um, that originally came out in the 70s. I think this is the 1978 reissue. Only different in that it's on yellow vinyl. And then the original one had a, you know, interesting silk screen cover. This one kind of reproduces it a little bit. Um, and this one's pretty commonly available. You could still pick these up for pretty cheap. Um, I think, I'm not sure, but I think they might have reissued like one of those, maybe Superior Viaduct might have reissued um, Satisfaction looking a little more like the original one. Um, but this record is significant to me because I bought this when I was a teenager. I had not heard the residents. I've heard of the residents. Back in that time, you might read about a band or hear about them on the radio, and maybe you would hear a song by them, but often you didn't. And until I learned to listen to my local community radio station as a kid, I had never heard any kind of unusual music, but I started reading about this band called The Residents and things about them, like nobody knows who they are, etc. And based on descriptions, I thought, I got to hear these guys. It's just there. It just sounded fascinating. So I think I saw an ad for them in the back of Rolling Stone magazine for a catalog. Little tiny ad along with all the other ads. And so I sent away and it seemed like I completely forgot. Then get the catalog for Ralph Records, which I still have some. I should have got one to show it to you. And then read the catalog and thought, you know, I don't have a lot of money. I was a teenager. I got had a really meager allowance and I hated mail ordering stuff. So it better be like, I better get like the bang for my buck. And so I read through their catalog and based on their description, this, and also I was like really into Devo at the time. Devo was sort of the gateway drug into unusual music. So uh, of course, because Devo also covered Satisfaction, this was a, like a logical jumping on point for the residents for me and I think it was like two bucks they were um Ralph was selling their singles for really cheap and I think they even had sales on some of their seven inch records either by them or other artists like art bears for like 50 cents or something and I stupidly didn't pile up on them but um so I got this and then I wanted an album I had enough money I could buy an album I think they were selling LPs for like uh, something like six ninety nine or something like that. And absurdly cheap, it seemed to me even then. And so I thought, well, I can afford a um, an LP and a single. So based on reading it and me totally misunderstanding it, I got also ordered Third Reich and Roll. And um, it seemed like months later they come just because I'm just I can't wait for stuff. I just have always had an issue with mail ordering stuff. So I get them, and the first thing I do is put um, satisfaction on the turntable, and it was just nuts. I mean, if you've ever heard it, it's like the slow, dirgy, almost heavy metal-like take on satisfaction, just somebody playing maniacally the riff over and over and over, and then a super distorted voice, which was a new thing to me. Um, a super distorted voice just kind of screaming these insane lyrics. And while I love that song, and it was just mind-blowing to me, the flip side to this song, which is loser is incongruent to weed, or loser weed, as I always called it, the B side is just the most perversely weird, almost nursery rhyme-like song over a really tinny, what sounds like a banjo being played maniacally, and... Um, the, the lyrics are just really peculiar and indecipherable. And I think maybe because it was on yellow vinyl, which is novel to me at the time, just colored vinyl made me think, because we had a children's record as a kid that was on yellow vinyl. It made me think this is like, God, this is like a children's record from Mars. It just, I still to this day kind of prefer the B-side to this Residence um, song, Loser Weed. 
to the A side because it's just so goddamn peculiar. I didn't know at the time that I think the um, the uh, banjo or maybe it's treated guitar now <clears throat> was actually played by Snake Finger who collaborated and then it, that opened a whole thing like who's the Snake Finger individual? That's just really weird and backing stylist the Pointless Sisters. I this record just hit me like a lightning bolt. It was just so peculiar. I was very young. I was probably like you know fourteen, fifteen. And um, I, my idea of weird music at the time was Pink Floyd. I was always looking for something really kind of weird like Pink Floyd. And then I liked Devo. And so I was looking for bands like Devo. And in so doing, found The Residents. And this record completely, irrevocably changed my life. Um, and I remember thinking, wow, what do other people think of this? And I remember putting, I think I put Loser Weed. Maybe I even put Satisfaction on a mixtape and when my friends and I are driving around um, I made them play it and they, they like played a few minutes of it and then just yanked the tape off and I think after that I was never allowed to contribute to uh, a road trip jam sessions ever again and I was just kind of flabbergasted wow why didn't they think that was as weird and as cool as I did, but then I had some growing up to do, as Jack Handy would say. But yeah, and then this record was, I'm really embarrassed to say, i it was kind of indecipherable to me. I thought it was really bizarre. I loved it. But <clears throat> the weird part was I had just a passing familiarity with some of the garage oldies that are being lampooned on this record. If you don't know this record, basically it's, it's like this weird it's like the stuff that was on the radio in the 60s run through this weird sensibility and just bizarrely reinterpreted it's almost like this post-apocalyptic kind of sounding hit parade it's just really strange and bizarre they're like two album side suites one of them is of course they're not listed on the back are they um, it's like Hitler was a vegetarian was one of them and the other one was swastikas on parade and it's just, it's scary, it's sinister, it's weird. But because I wasn't totally familiar with all of the, um, every single song on there. I mean, of course, I knew some of them, like 96 Tears and things like that. I didn't quite get that part of the joke, but I still found it to be a really wonderfully peculiar record that I listened to over and over and over. And um, maybe not the best introduction to The Residents, because it's them playing other, you know, cover songs, which is something they did later in their career with things like the um, composer series which is where they started to lose me and then I would I would uh, I kind of went more into the residence catalog and found wow there's things I really like there's things I don't know if I like it now but I think later it's going to grow on me and that was indeed the case and I think the residents were just fantastic I had the um, pleasure of interviewing the residents Homer Flynn there artistic director and I told him to tell the residents that this record warped me for regular music for life and he replied well I'll tell the residents and I'm sure they'll be pleased that you were warped so that was super gratifying for me because that record this record just as I said completely ruined me for normal music forever and I'm eternally grateful to the residents so yes, uh, that's. I'm gonna try to do more of these. This was kind of fun. I'm not gonna edit things, or anything, or worry about the quality of it. I hope you like this video, and if you do, um, do like it, subscribe. I may do more if there's um, sufficient feedback. But um, thanks. This has been uh, Rich from. Uh, it came from Ohm Studios. Bye.